That is Michelle, Lauren, and Jessica. Please wave now so everybody knows who you are. Great. <laughs> this morning, we would also like to welcome you. So doing so, if you can add your name, your email address, your business name, your website, and where you're located. Because again, power is all about powerful connections. Today, we want this to be interactive. So be chatting as far as in the chat box. Be asking questions. Definitely things that you want to do, comments, anything you want to put in that chat box. Because at the end, one lucky person will win a really awesome gift. If you're joining us for the first time, please find out more about this program at sonobankpower.com, supporting women in business, women entrepreneurs, and powerful couples. Today, our speaker is Yvonne Karp. She is a stylist and the owner of YMK Beauty Company with over 10 years of experience in the beauty industry. She is a certified Schwarzkopf color expert and soon to be a Schwarzkopf Ask Color educator. Say that a couple of times. <laughs> Yvonne is also a BCU Gold Rush dancer, alumni, and former semi-pro cheerleader for the Richmond Rough Riders Arena Football. And also one thing she didn't put in our bio, which is very important, she is the mom of two beautiful children. Also too, Yvonne is currently the assistant coach of the BCU Gold Rush dancers. You can also find her behind the chair creating glamorous lived-in styles for her clients but also you could also see her behind scenes coordinating photo shoots, stage productions, and the Richmond market. Yvonne will be giving us tips and tricks and tutorials and advice. I don't know about you, but we are definitely looking forward to this because it's gonna be on root touch-ups, easy at home do's, blow drying, at home hair mask, also how to uh, curl the correct way. And we'll have, as I said, Tom at the end to ask her any question that you would like. So Yvonne, let's get started and everyone enjoy. All right. Thank you very much, Julie. Hi, everyone. My name's Yvonne. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thank you to all of my clients that have taken the time out of their day to tune in. I miss you guys so much. I cried a little bit yesterday when we found out that Richmond could not open. Um, so what I find is next best thing is to be able to connect with you guys face to face this way it helps me have some human interaction other than my two lovely children um like julie did say i am a business owner i'm also a wife and a mom and right now is a crazy time we find that we are balancing everything we are home we're homeschooling we're full-time chefs we're full-time housekeepers so it's nice to take a moment out of your day to do something for you, for all the women and the moms and the caregivers out there, for the people who are working on the front lines. You guys need a little something to make you feel good about yourself, to you know, put a little bit of pep in your step to make you feel fab through these tough times. So a little bit about me. I, like Julie said, I was a VCU Gold Rush dancer. I'm currently the assistant coach for the team. Um, my passion is in my work. I love doing things that help other people feel better about themselves. Um, I believe that everyone is beautiful. Every body is beautiful and you can work with the things that you have. Um, so one thing that we're going to go over today is root touch up. I know a lot of you, especially now that, you know, salons are opening, staggering, you're going to have a little bottleneck of clients wanting to get in who can't quite find you know the appointment right when they want it so this tutorial is really going to help you guys sort of bridge that gap in between the time where you can't get in to see your stylist to get your roots touched up it'll get you through to the next appointment um, we're also going to go over coconut masks that you can do at home we're always looking for ways to make our hair shinier healthier um, I know that my hair, because I color it all the time, is dry sometimes. So things that you can do at home that are going to make your hair lustrous and shiny, give it some bounce back. And we're also going to go over how to curl. Um, a lot of people curl and they want a beach wave. And so a lot of um, questions I get from my clients is how do I recreate what you do in salon? And so I'm going to break the tutorial down. It's going to be very straightforward. Um, and 
step-by-step -step for everyone. And then the next two things we're gonna cover are um, updos. I especially love to do a quick updo because I do not wash my hair more than once a week. And so by day four, five, and six, it needs a little bit of love. So these are some great tricks that you can use that only take like five or six minutes at home to make your hair look like you put some effort into it, even though you really didn't. So um, if you have questions, make sure you tap on the comment bar. Um, my giveaway today for anyone who leaves a comment um, is a round brush that will help you through the blow dry tutorial that we're going to cover today, a thermal protectant and a root lifting spray. So you get three products. Um, the two products are full size and then the round brush you can use for blow drying, putting a little bit of curl in your hair, refreshing day two hairstyles. Um, so just keep that in mind. If you have questions, I will circle back at the end and answer all of the questions that you have. Um, we're really gonna cover techniques, tips for success, and things that are going to make it easier for you at home. All right, so let's get started. We'll jump right in. First, we're gonna talk about roots. Um, I know that a lot of you are feeling desperate um, as salons open, expect some delays because your stylists are working their best to get you guys in, even though we're under a lot of new regulations, salons can only open at 50% capacity. So we all need patience with our stylists at these times. Um, there are certain tools that you can use. One, you wanna make sure that you are, um, calling your stylist, just asking for some advice. What can you do at home to cover up any grays that you have coming in? Um, a lot of stylists have offered take-home kits. I know that I have. Um, they come with a brush and gloves and all types of things that you need in order to touch your roots up at home to get you through to that next appointment. Um, so we're going to play this video. Um, it tells you all of the things that you need I do have some recommendations as far as touch-up kits that you can buy at the grocery store. Do not tell your stylist, I told you this. Um, Clairol offers a root touch-up kit that you can get from the grocery store. When in doubt, go with a shade slightly lighter than what you expect because what you don't want to have is something that is way dark and you're like in the mirror, like, what did I do? I regret all of my decisions. Um, so just be mindful of that. If you are going to buy a touch-up kit from the grocery store, err on the side of lighter instead of darker so you don't ruin anything that you and your stylist have worked so hard to put together. All right, so here is our first video. This is our, I'm gonna screen share here. Excuse me, let me get this open. And here we go. Sorry, where is it? Just open it here. Here we go. All right, here we go. Yvonne, we can't hear the audio. Uh oh, okay. They want to just start over. Yeah, I'm going to. Let me see. Sorry, guys. Okay. Minimize. Let's try this again. Okay, let's try this again. Sorry, ladies, this worked the last time I did it. 
Okay. Let's see, share screen. Two on root touch up. You want to start first by brushing any tangles out of your hair, making sure your hair is nice and smooth and easy. Can everyone hear the sound now? Yes. Yes? Okay. To work with. Next, you're going to take your brush and use the pointed end to help you section off the crown portion of your hair. From your points of recession, you can use your fingers and draw a line straight back, meeting at the base of the crown of the head, or you can use the pointed end of the brush to help you make a clean section. Use your clips to clip the hair up and away. Sure to use a towel, an old t-shirt, or in this case a color cape to protect your clothing before you start the application, just so everything stays nice and clean. Use your brush to mix the color together until nice and smooth. Put on your gloves, have a towel handy, and it also helps to have a few extra clips. Use the pointed end of the brush to help you take your first section. Start about two to three inches back from the hairline and draw a line straight down to the top of the ear. Wipe any excess color off of your brush onto the side of your color bowl. Begin application brushing away from your face so that the hair that is colored stays secure and away from the face. Again, using the end of your brush, take quarter to half inch sections, pulling the hair back away from the face and applying color. Once you reach the hairline, pull the hair back away from the face and apply a generous amount of color at your hairline, especially if that's where you have a high concentration of grays. Repeat that step of the application process on the other side of the head. Moving on to the crown portion of the application. Remove your hair from the clips, brush it out so it's smooth and easy to work with. Lay your hair over to the right hand side if you are a lefty and over to the left hand side if you are a righty. This will make the painting process a little bit easier. Again, taking quarter inch to half inch sections from the hairline straight back to the crown of the head. Lay the section down over the side portion and apply the color generously at the hairline if that is where you have a high concentration of gray and following it back towards the crown. Friendly reminder here to keep your section thin and clean to ensure that you're getting proper saturation of color onto the hair.
Once you've finished applying color to the crown, if you still have extra color left in your bowl, you can go back and cross check your sections. Here I section the hair from the crown in half inch sections and use my leftover color to reapply to any areas I may have missed. Once you reach the hairline, you have successfully completed your root touch-up. Set your timer for 35 minutes and allow hair to process. Once your processing time is complete, shampoo your hair twice in the shower. Then apply the conditioning treatment included in your color kits for 5 minutes and then rinse. Thank you all for watching my video. Please feel free to send me any messages if you have any questions. Hello everyone. All right. So that's pretty straightforward, yes? Okay. Um, let me just uh, make a little couple side notes there. As you guys saw in the video, that was just for the T-zone area, the crown and the front hairline portion of the hair because we have to leave a little something for the stylist to do when they go back into work. Um, also, Please, 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 I, from professional, do not try to touch up your blonde highlights at home. Bleach is not your friend, and it does not work as well as you think it will. So if, you know, you're getting desperate and you have these beautiful blonde highlights, please reach out to your stylist, consult with them on things that you can do to blend through the highlights to get you through to your next appointment, because we don't want to have any hair falling off in the shower or orange and red streaks in the hair that your stylist will have to fix later, okay? So let's move on. After we've touched up all of these grays, what do we do now with the mid strands and the ends? My hair always needs a deep conditioning treatment because it's been every color of the rainbow. Today it's purple, tomorrow it'll be blue, who knows? Um, so what I like to use at home, and this is something that everyone can use, um, coconut oil is my best friend. It is super reparative for the hair, and down to a molecular level, it is small enough that it will be absorbed by the hair strands to really give you long-lasting, reparative, moisturized results. So I've got a few slides here that I'm going to share with you guys. Um, remember, when you are buying the things that you need for at-home coconut oil hair masks, you want to get the extra virgin olive, um, not olive oil, coconut oil, um, cold pressed if you can find it. Um, and just make sure that you warm all of the coconut oil up. You can you know, put it in a hot water bath or you can warm it up in the microwave so that it is liquefied before you mix it and incorporate it into any other of the ingredients. Um, so I've got my first slide here. I'm going to share with you ladies. Give me one second and get this to open. Okay, share screen now. So the first one is a coconut mask with honey. This is great for any buildup you have in the scalp, um, if you tend to get an itchy scalp or if you have any um, dandruff buildup or product buildup, a coconut and honey mask is great for exfoliating the scalp, but also moisturizing and adding shine to the hair. So you can screen grab this little um, clip here. You want to make sure that you thoroughly mix the honey with the oil. I find that it helps to warm both of the ingredients up and put them together. Um, when you are applying this, put it from the scalp all the way down to your ends and then use the pads of your fingers to massage your scalp to loosen up any dandruff that you may have. 
afterward, you want to rinse with warm water and then lightly shampoo and condition because you don't want to wash away all of the wonderful conditioning ingre ingredients that you just put on your hair. All right, so for the next slide, we've got coconut oil and aloe vera. I will share this again as well. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, we'll skip on to the next one. This one is for rep reparative um, properties. Um, my hair is damaged from coloring a million billion times. This mask works great at filling in split ends and helping to repair damage from heat styling and from chemical processing. So you wanna use a quarter cup of coconut oil, you wanna use one whisked egg and a tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil. Um, warm everything up, combine them together, apply from roots to ends, but you wanna concentrate this mask on the areas that are the most damaged. So if you've got a lot of split ends, I know a lot of us are desperate for a haircut right now. This will sort of help to revive the hair. I will preface a um, little note here. Do not rinse this with hot water. You will cook the egg. So you wanna make sure that you rinse with lukewarm water and then shampoo and condition as usual. Because the last thing we need is egg cooked into our hair. All right, and one more slide for you ladies. This one here is coconut oil and aloe vera. This one is my favorite. This one you can use, all of these masks are great for all curl patterns. If you have curly hair, straight hair, fine hair, thick hair. If you have coily hair, this one is gonna be your best friend. Um, you mix a quarter, cup of aloe vera gel with a half of a cup of coconut oil. Warm everything up and you want to gently mix this together. Um, if you whisk the aloe too hard, it starts to get really gel consistently, like almost like a putty. So you want to slowly incorporate these two things together um, and apply it from roots to ends. Concentrate on any areas that feel dry. Again, let it sit for 30 minutes rinse it, and then lightly shampoo and condition. This one is my favorite. It leaves the hair super hydrated, super shiny, and just much more manageable, easier to comb through. For my curly girls that are tuned in, this is great for helping to revive any um, frizz that you may have in your hair. It sort of hydrates the curls so that they can form a better, more bouncy curl. Okay, so if any of you ladies have questions about that, feel free to type anything into the comment bar. Next, we will move on to um, blow dry. This can be a nemesis for a lot of people because there's a little bit of dexterity that is involved with having to hold a blow dryer and a brush at the same time. One thing that is going to help you is the right tools. So first, let me talk about the different types of tools you will need for blow dry. It really is important that you have the right brush for your hair type. I have straight hair. Um, if you have curly hair, you are going to use a different type of brush than I would to get a smooth and voluminous blowout. We have two different kinds of paddle brushes that I like to use. This is a wet brush. If you have curly hair and you don't have a wet brush, you need to jump on this train. This will cut your detangling time in half. This is great for in the shower, putting a little bit of conditioner in your hair and then working out any tangles that you may have. If you have little children, my daughter is five years old. She has very curly hair. This is my best friend. It saves me a lot of tears. But if you are a curly girl, kinky, curly, coily, if you've got this beautiful, beautiful curl, but you want to be able to blow dry at home, you need a brush like this. It's got synthetic bristles as well as bore bristles to help create tension on the hair as you blow dry so it will smooth out 
any curl pattern. Um, you want to also have a round brush if you're looking for a little bit of bend at the ends of the hair, but also for lift at the root. So in my video, I use this brush. This one is my best friend. It's a about medium to large size round brush. This is what you would use if you are going to have more wavy to straight hair. And a brush like this, boar bristles, is what you want to use if you're going to smooth out um, a tighter curl, more of those 3A to C curls. Um, if you have coily hair, you want to first detangle with a wide tooth comb or a wet brush but you're going to want to use a smaller brush than this size, but still with these four bristles. Second tip for a successful blow dry is products. Products are going to be the number one key to keeping the style after your hair is dry. I like to use a thermal protectant, um, a root lifter, and a medium hold mousse or styling cream, just depending on whether your hair is finer and straighter or thicker and curly. If you are a thicker curly hair lady, you want to make sure that you have something that has moisture in it, but also holds. Um, something that's gonna have anti-frizz properties, an anti-humectant's gonna help fight humidity so that your blow dryer stays smoother longer. So let's move on to that video. Let me see if I can get that to pull up for us. Okay, where did you go? Bear with me one second, let me get it to pull up. Okay. Oh, goodness. Excuse me, ladies, just one second. Sorry, I just had it in the corner tab and then it disappeared. Sorry, right, we'll talk amongst ourselves. That is okay. Let me get this to pull up. I just downloaded it. While we're waiting, if you all have questions, be sure to put them in the chat so we can answer them at the end. Yes, please do. All right, I cannot get this to open. So what we're gonna do is while this opens again, I am going to jump on to the next portion um, to how to curl since I cannot get this to open. All right. So we'll touch back the next portion. After I show you this curl demo, we'll touch back on this blow dry video. Can you guys hear me? Okay, sorry about that. So, beach waves. This is the hot craze for hairstyles right now. The difference between a beach wave and a traditional curl is that it's a lot less structured. It looks more lived in, the ends are left straight for the most part, and it is a more tousled, sort of effortless boho style. Um, you can use several different tools to get this look. Some people use a flat iron, other people will use a wand or a curling iron. Today I'm going to demonstrate with your traditional curling iron. This is typically what most people have at home. You can go with a larger barrel. This is a one inch barrel, one and a quarter inch barrel, and this one is a three quarter inch. So the difference between this one is you're going to get a looser 
curl and this works better on longer hair. If you have more um, collarbone length and shorter, you want to use a three quarter barrel curling iron. So this is what I use today to get this sort of looser curl look. But I'm gonna demonstrate with this one because I feel like this is the one that most women have at home. The difference between more traditional curl and a beach wave is that you are taking vertical sections of the hair, okay? Instead of going this way with the curling iron, you're gonna drop the elbow down and twist this way. You're gonna use your fingers to release the clamp. This is called a click and slide method. So I am going to demonstrate this. You wanna have a brush to help get out any tangles. You wanna have a, I like to use a thermal spray. My hairspray has a thermal protectant in it. Um, it will say heat protecting spray. If you have a thermal spray at home that is a wet thermal spray, not an aerosol like a hairspray, but it's wet, you need to blow dry it into the hair first and then continue with the curl process. So I'm going to clip a section of my hair up and away and I'm gonna demonstrate right here for you ladies. I'm going to take a vertical section about the width of my curling iron. So if this is three quarters of an inch, I'm going to take about a, an inch sectioning. And it's going to go vertically. Clip the rest of the hair that you're not working with up and out of the way. Okay. So I've got my one inch section here. You're going to take your little brush smooth out the section. And I always curl twisting away from my face. So you wanna hold the curling iron up and down vertically. You're going to start more mid strands. So I'm gonna open the clip, slide the hair inside, clamp it down, twist and pull. So I'm gonna twist and then I'm gonna click, click, click. So that's the, I'm not creating excess tension on the hair. Use your thumb to click and then re-roll the curl. Okay, hold it there. Use your thumb again, click it down. Okay, you're gonna use your free hand to guide and hold the little tail of hair that is sticking out from the bottom of the curling iron. Click and then re-roll. So I use my fingers, I just gently tap to see if the hair is warm and then I'm going to pull straight down. So release the clamp, Pull the hair straight down. And then this is the most important step. You're gonna twist and stretch this curl. So I'm retwisting and I'm stretching it. This is the difference between getting a beach wave versus a more traditional curl. You have to stretch the curl out just a little bit. So I'll do one more section right here in the front. Again, if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, the curling iron that I'm using now, it's a brand that I recommend to most of my clients, is a Babyliss. Um, it, it reads Baby Bliss, but it's Babyliss Pro. These curling irons, I've had this one for three years. I use it for weddings. I use it almost every day at the salon. It is tried and true. It will not fry out on you. So last section here, again, going up vertically, open the clamp. We're going to twist and then click. Click the hair down with the clamp to release it. Retwist, click it down again, leave your ends out, hold it here. Again, gentle tap. We've all had that moment where we've like burnt our face or burnt our hands. Make sure you're keeping the curling iron away from your face. Pull it straight down, twist it, stretch it, and then release it. So. Once I'm done with that, I'll hit it one more time with my thermal protectant bloat hairspray. Quick spray here. And you wanna just let the curl sit for a little while. You can tap the curl to feel if it has fully cooled down. Once you let your curl cool down, it will hold that shape. It makes the hair cuticle shut back down and will hold the shape longer. So try not to rush through brushing your curls out. You wanna make sure everything is pulled down. And then I like to use my fingers in like a clawing motion and just 
claw through the curls. Okay, and that creates that really beachy wave, but it's not as formal as like a traditional curl. Okay, so if you guys have any questions about that, any questions about the iron, you guys can put that in the comment section down below. And let's see if this video will open now. Okay, back to blow dries. Let's see, try this again. Nope, that is not it. Okay, bear with me, ladies. It worked this morning. Here we go, let's try this. There we go. Pause this. Yay, I got it to work. All right, let's screen share now. All right, this is your how to on blow dry. You want to make sure your hair is damp but not dripping. I have allowed my hair to air dry a little bit before applying products. My hair tends to lack moisture in the mid strands and the ends and so I spray extra moisturizing products in those areas. Apply root lifting spray to crown of the head and hairline. When applying mousse for a voluminous blow dry, I flip my hair over, apply to the underneath, then the mid strands and ends in a sandwiching motion between my hands. I use the arches of my eyebrows as a guide to determine how wide of a section to take at the crown. blow dryer the same direction as the hair fall, not pointing straight at the head, but down with the fall of the hair. Use your fingers to create gentle tension on the hair to help loosen any curls. Also, for curly girls, when it's time to blow dry with the round brush, take smaller sections of hair. Place the hair on the round brush and follow the brush down with the blow dryer. Always remembering to point the blow dryer down the same direction as the hair fall. Here I am using a pull and twist motion to create bend at the end of the hair strand. To create 
volume at the root, you want to over direct the hair up and focus the blow dryer at the root. Again, I am using the twist and pull motion to create bend at the end of my hair. Handling the brush does require a little bit of practice, but after you try a few times, you'll get the hang of it. Here I'm demonstrating how to lift the hair at the root and then wrap the hair around the round brush to create volume and curl. Let the hair cool down before releasing it from the brush. Remember to untwist the hair from the brush so it doesn't get stuck. A little helpful hint here. As the hair begins to dry, it will create less tension on the hairbrush and glide a little bit smoother. That is how you know it's time to move on to the next section of hair. Again, I focused on drying the roots and mid strands first before doing the twist and pull motion on the mid strands and ends. Tilting my head like this while blow drying helps to relieve arm fatigue. My hair naturally parts to the right, so I will be saving that section of hair to blow dry last. Taking smaller sections is really the key to a successful blow dry. It helps to keep the hair more manageable To section the portion of hair where my part falls, I will start from the back of the section and work my way forward. I want to make sure that the section is about the same width and length as the hairbrush. By now your arms will feel a little bit tired, so shake them out and take breaks in between if you have to. For these sections, I like to pull the hair forward towards the face. Again, laying the hair on top of the brush, I am focusing the blow dryer the same direction as the hair fall, and lifting at the roots in a scooping motion with my blow dryer. Once the mid strands are dry, I then take the brush and place it on top of the hair, flipping the hair back away from my face, and use the nozzle of the blow dryer to force the hair around the bend of the round brush. Excuse my daughter here, she wanted to make a little cameo in the video. Again, I'm going to place the hair on top of the brush, focusing on drying the mid strands and the roots. Once the roots and mid strands are dry, I am going to place the brush behind the section, flip the hair over, and again, use the nozzle on the blow dryer to force the hair around the bend of the brush. Here, I am setting the hair. I'm going to wrap my hair around my three fingers, creating a curl, and then I'm going to take my duckbill clip and use it to secure that section. I place the duckbill clip flush against the scalp and then slide it in between the space of the curl.
letting the hair cool on the brush before taking it out allows the hair to better hold the curl. You can use the Cool Shot feature on your blow dryer to help the curls cool faster. To get a little extra lift in the front, insert your fingers into your hairline, lift up, hit it with the spray, let it dry, and then release. Finally, spray the hair from roots to ends with a firm hold hairspray to lock in your style. All right. So what did you ladies think? It's pretty straightforward. Okay, practice makes perfect. Um, blow drying is not easy. I still get tired when I do it on my own hair. So you'll, if you know me, you know that I will use any tip or trick to not blow dry my hair if I can help it. Um, all right, so our last little portion, little tidbit of information for the day, we are going to talk about updos. Um, and I'm not talking about beautiful prom style updos. I'm talking about something that will hold, something that does not involve a lot of time, and something that will just get your day three, day four dirty hair out of your way and up so that it looks like you put a little bit of effort into your appearance whenever you need to. Um, so the things that you need are going to be very straightforward. You want to get Elastic. So I like to use these little clear elastics, but you can use rubber bands, you can use your hair ties, whatever. Don't use scrunchies, they're a little bit too bulky for the look that we're going for. I'm going to show you two different tutorials. The first is just going to be three ponytails. It is very straightforward. Um, who remembers in the 80s and 90s that topsy tails were popular, right? I lived with topsy tails in my hair. So it's going to be the same technique, the same thought process behind it. You're going to make a ponytail and then you're going to turn that ponytail inside out. So let me quickly demonstrate that first, I call it the three ponytail updo, okay? So you're going to section your hair from the crown. You're going to take two partings. You're going to take the hair forward and then the hair back. So I'm going to take my comb. I like to use a wide tooth comb so that I don't pull too much of my hair. So. Here's the front portion, and I'm gonna do that on both sides. Now bear with me, I'm doing this in the camera, and usually I would be doing this in a mirror. Okay, so here is my first section that I'm going to put into my ponytail. And I will, you know, check the front, make sure that there's no like bumps, coming through and then just loosely ponytail in the back. You want to have the ponytail loose so that it's easier for you to flip it inside. So here's the ponytail. I'm gonna take my pointer finger, I'm gonna stick it in the middle of the ponytail and then flip that ponytail around. So I'm gonna take it down, don't pull it too low and then flip it inside and pull the hair through. Just like that and then give it a little twist and tighten. So that's the first ponytail, okay? The, the second ponytail is going to be these little pieces that are left out. I'm going to twist them back. So I kept my part line here so that it looks a little bit less formal, a little bit more lived in. I'm gonna take the hair back on both sides and I'm gonna make the ponytail fit just above the ponytail that I just made. Again, loosely. Tie the hair with the ponytail. Okay, twist it one more time. Flip it inside like so. And then I'm gonna take this and tuck it into the ponytail that I just made. So take it, tuck it down into that previous section right here. And that secures it up and out of the way from the front. And then you've got this pretty little loop in the back, almost like a Gibson roll. So the third ponytail 
you're putting at the mid strands to ends of the ponytails that you just combined. So I'm gonna pull this forward and then probably you wanna leave about two inches of hair at the bottom. If you have a very layered haircut, you'll have to sort of slide the ponytail a little higher so that you don't have the little tips and ends of your layers um, poking out of this style. So I have put a little ponytail in there. You're going to need some bobby pins to secure this, okay? You can use bobby pins or hair pins. I like these bobby pins. You wanna make sure that you are putting the bumpy edge against the scalp whenever you apply the bobby pin so that it holds a little bit better. So I'm gonna turn back around. I'm gonna take this last little portion of my ponytail and I'm gonna tuck it in one more time. You wanna keep the ends of the ponytail tucked in to the roll, okay? So I wanna make sure that it doesn't stick out. Just tuck that down in there. If it pokes out like this, you're gonna take the bobby pin and fasten it and tuck the hair back up into your little updo, all right? So I split the bobby pin. I am going to slide it bumpy edge down against my scalp. So that's one bobby pin. The next bobby pin I'm going to use to get this little tail that's sticking out, I'm just gonna use my finger to tuck it up and away. There. So let me check. How did I do? Yeah, cute little Gibson roll. Okay. It'll keep it up, out of the way. It's something that is quick and easy to do. And you look like you did a lot without doing a whole bunch. All right. So the next one, that's the Gibson roll. Again, it's just three ponytails turned inside of one another. And the last one that we're going to do today before we talk about, or before I answer any questions, is going to be a two ponytail updo. Now this is one that you can use a braid. If you don't know how to braid, you can just twist your hair. Again, so shake it all out. I am going to take my part and then just use my finger and follow it straight back. You can also use a comb if you want a cleaner section, but I'm just gonna use my fingers because I don't want the hair to visibly be parted. I want it to look like it all sort of just flows back towards the back of the head. So I divide my hair into two sections. I'm gonna do a ponytail on the left side and the right side. Make sure that you pull your ponytails back and not over the ears because we don't want Princess Leia. We want it to come further back behind the shape of the head, okay? We wanna make sure we see our face and not these big buns sticking out from the side. All right. So one loose ponytail. Two loose ponytails. All right. So here you can braid these. If you do not know how to braid, you don't have to. You can twist. So a twist looks like this. I'm gonna take my hair into two sections. I'm just going to wrap them opposite directions. So I'm wrapping this one back, I'm wrapping this one forward, and then I'm going to wrap them around each other. Okay, leave a little tail so that you have something to tuck. I'm gonna secure this. And it's okay if you've got little bits like this sticking out, it gives it more of a you know boho feel. Twist on this side as well. And you could also braid if you wanted to take that option if you guys know how. Good. Secure it with your ponytail holder. All right, so the way that we wrap these, now the rest of the work happens at the back of the head. So you're going to take, you're going to go up and over and then under and over. So one's going to go up and one's going to go under. This ponytail I'm going to take up and rest it over the top and then I'm going to tuck it under. 
grabbing these little, my little tail of the ponytail and fastening it with the bobby pin. Tuck those little ends up into your updo. And then you're going to repeat on the other side. This one is going to go under and around. So I'm going to take it under the other ponytail, take it up, tuck this down behind the hair, and then fasten it. So you want to use this, you want to be able to sort of see your hair from behind. Like I can see that I have little bits here that are poking out. You're just going to grab a bobby pin and tuck all of those pieces in, okay? So bobby pin, I see it sticking out. I'm just going to press it up into the updo. All right, so there you have it. Just a little twisty updo. Something quick, something easy that you can do at home. It's pretty secure. The tighter you tie your hair ties, the more secure that this will stay. Remember, when using bobby pins, again, you wanna put the bumpy side down. Don't open the bobby pin up so much, okay? You want it just slightly open so that it will create tension on the hair and really sandwich the hair in between the clips so that it doesn't slip out. And then you'd set with a little bit of hairspray. I like to pull a couple of pieces from the front out just to make it look a little bit more lived in. And there you have it, a quick two ponytail, two twist updo. That'll make you look like you put some effort together without really having to try too hard. And it's not that difficult to get, you know, a cute hairstyle with just the things that you have at home. Well, that is what I have for you ladies today. I am thankful that you guys tuned in to watch these tutorials. I'm sorry about the technical difficulties we had earlier. Again, if you guys had any questions, I think now's the time we're gonna answer some questions and then we will pick um, someone for the giveaway. You're going to get a round brush, thermal protectant and some root lifter. So you'll be able to try this blow dry tutorial at home. Hi, right, Julie. Lauren? Um, yes, Yvonne, we have quite a few questions. Um, <laughs> so I'm just gonna start from the top. Sure. Um, first question is, um, there's the spray root touch up out there. Mm -hmm. Does that work well for blondes? Yes. It also will be, depend on how dark your natural hair color is. So if you have blonde highlights, but your hair is my color, it won't white blended. But if you have more of a medium brown or if you're an all over blonde and you're looking to blend blonde root touch up with your darker roots, spraying it on it will help, but it will just mask it. So it will slightly lighten your base color until the next wash. Okay. Okay. So it just lasts basically until you wash your hair again. Correct. Yes. Okay. Um, going to the mask. How often should we use those masks? So the frequency is going to depend on your hair habits at home. I use a deep conditioning treatment on my hair probably every other time I wash and I'm only washing once a week. Um, I, I have a lot of, um, I've done a lot of colors to my hair. So my mid strands and ends, they get a little dry because my hair is more porous. So I am doing a deep conditioning treatment every other time. If your hair is relatively healthy, if you're not, if you're looking for more like you need it for moisture, you're not looking to repair any damage, you could do it once a week realistically. If your hair is fine, you want to taper it off, maybe doing every other week because coconut oil will slightly weigh the hair down. So you really just want to use it when your hair is telling you that it's thirsty or it's damaged. Okay, great. Um, do you have a certain shampoo you recommend that we use after the mask or is just like your normal shampoo and conditioner fine to use? So you want to use something that's going to be more gentle. Um, don't use any kind of like clarifying shampoo conditioner. Um, 
So the normal pH of your hair is about a 3.5 to 4, okay? So even just water will lift the cuticle of your hair. Clarifying shampoos tend to have a pH level of like 8 or 9, which really opens up the hair cuticle. It's like a facial for your hair. It really cleans everything out. So you wouldn't want to use anything like that. You would want to use something that would be either for color-treated hair, um, something that's going to say gentle cleansing, sulfate-free. Um, shampoos like that are going to help keep all of the moisture that you just put into your hair in your hair. And really remember to um, follow it up with a conditioner because the conditioner is what's going to seal the cuticle down to lock in all that moisture. Okay, perfect. Um, next question, where do you get pure aloe vera gel and like the coconut oil you recommend to use? Okay. Um, I buy the extra virgin cold pressed coconut oil. I have gotten it from Target from Publix, from your local grocery store, um, I found that you can find pure aloe vera oil in like the pharmacy section of Target. They do have pure aloe vera gel. Now you wanna make sure that it says 100% pure and make sure it's not something that you would like put on like sunburns or things like that because they have additives. You want it to say 100% pure. So I found it in places like Target, but you know, they'll also have it at Whole Foods or any like um, Elwood Thompson's in Carytown. They have like jars of it, 100% pure aloe vera gel. Okay, perfect. Um, next question is about the brushes that you showed. Mm -hmm. um, I believe this was from Catherine. She wanted to know who makes that wet brush you were talking about, the brush you should use. Um, okay, like when so wet brush is actually the brand that makes it, but they have a million different varieties of these brushes now. You want to find one that's going to have a flexible head. And the difference between a wet brush and other traditional paddle brushes is the flexibility in the bristle. The um, bristles bend much more easily, which allows it to pull out of a tangle instead of tightening a tangle. If you think about it, if you ever had your shoelaces tied in a knot and you tighten the knot, it's even harder to get out. The brush has that same concept. It pulls out of the tangle so that you can work it out more easily without tightening the tangle. So just make sure when you're in the store looking for one, you want to bend the bristles. They should be very flexible so that you can not tighten any tangles and work out the hair more easily. Okay, perfect. Um, next question is, you demonstrated with a curling iron, but can you get the same results? Um, the beachy waves from using a wand. Absolutely. So when you're going to use a wand, um, the same technique will apply. Um, instead of holding it like this, you're going to hold your um, wand like this and wrap your hair the same direction away from the face and still hold. Um, I like to recommend using a glove when you're using a wand because you want to be able to firmly control the ends of your hair. Um, but it will give you the same result. Remember to rewrap and twist after. Perfect, okay. Um, next question is about the blow drying with the round brush. How mm -hmm. can you prevent, or any tips you have, us from getting the brush stuck in our hair? Okay. So that is the twist and pull motion. I'm gonna take my hair down real quick just to demonstrate. That is something that lots of people have questions about. Um, you want to remember not to pull the brush down while it is still in the mid strands of the hair. So if you have your brush and you are going to work that brush down with the blow dry, I am not going to twist it until these ends have come into the bristles of the brush, okay? And then I will use my blow dryer to twist, 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 but I'm waiting to twist it till I can see these ends, okay? If you wrap like we have all been guilty of and then try to twist, you're going to get it stuck. So you have to unwrap until you see the ends of the bristles in the uh, ends of the hair, excuse me, in the bristles of the brush, and that's how you get that smoothing motion. 
if these ends are tucked up in there, that's when it gets stuck. So make sure that you have just the tips of the hair still floating through the bristles and that's how you can continue to pull it. Once you get it up here, don't pull that brush. You need to, again, unwind it and then twist. Perfect, okay. <laughs> Um, next question is, any tips you have for breakage of the hair? Yes. So that mask with the egg, that is, so the egg is going to give you protein. Um, hair is made up of keratin, which is going to need protein. It's a protein-based amino acid. So you need to make sure that if you have a lot of breakage down here, granted, nothing can make up for a haircut. If you have split ends, you need to get your hair trimmed, especially if you're looking to get length in the hair, because once your hair breaks and is split at the bottom, it will continue to split up the hair strand, which is why a lot of women who are trying to grow their hair out but are not getting haircuts regularly feel like their hair is not growing. And it's because your hair is not growing healthy, it's splitting and then it's continuing to split further up the hair strand. What protein treatments do, any kind of mask that has protein that repairs damage, that's what you wanna look for in a mask, is something that's going to have protein or keratin. Those are the key words that you wanna look for for a mask. And you want to use those masks probably every other time you shampoo if your hair is really damaged like mine. It looks good now, but if I don't hydrate my hair and put protein back into it, it doesn't feel great. Perfect, okay. Um, and last question, is it better to blow dry your hair or let it completely air dry if you know you wanna curl it that day? Depends on what you need the time for. So I will typically, this is just my own personal routine. If I can help it, I try to do as little blow drying of my hair as possible. Uh, also, I'm a busy mom. And by the time I get a chance to take a shower and everyone else is asleep, it's like 1030 and nobody wants to spend 30 minutes blow drying their hair. So I'll put my hair up in a top knot and then take it out, rough dry it the next day and then curl it. So if you know that you're going to put a curling iron into your hair, it's not as much a necessity to blow dry it as it is to just make sure the hair is dry completely. So that's totally personal preference. It really is how much time do you have. Um, if you do have a thermal protectant, that's like I am a huge advocate for healthy hair and protecting your hair. Heat will damage your hair. Please, please, please use a thermal protectant. If your thermal protectant is a wet spray, you have to rough dry that into the hair before you curl. Perfect, okay. And last question is, how often do you recommend we wash our hair for fine hair or if you have thick hair? Like, is there a certain number of times a week you should wash your hair? Yes, that's a great question. Thanks for asking that. So this is something I try to speak to all of my clients about. Your hair and your scalp is its own ecosystem. So if you've ever, I know when I was a teenager, I had acne all the time. So I was washing my face like every day, sometimes twice a day, which ended up making my skin feel very tight and very dry. The same principle applies to your scalp. If you're washing every day, your skin is then every day trying to regenerate those oils that keep your scalp moisturized. So yes, your hair is gonna become more oily because your scalp is lacking the oil that it needs. So if you can help it, ladies, if you're washing your hair every day, try to just extend it every two days. Get a good dry shampoo that's going to get you through. You can get dry shampoos from your stylist, you can get dry shampoos from Target and from Walmart. Um, Dry shampoo will get you through day two. Your scalp will start to recognize. Your skin will start to equalize and won't produce as much oil. I can go seven days now, but two years ago, I couldn't. Three, three days was like my max um, until I, I literally would look like I had slick butter through my hair. It was just so oily, but it took that probably a six month period. I would just start to extend it. So if you have finer hair, your hair is going to get more weighed down because of the oil. 
in that case, you want to get a volumizing dry shampoo and try to do every other day. If you have really thick, coarse, curly hair, it's not going to look as oily as quickly because it's sort of camouflaged by how much hair you have. So if you have thick, coarse, curly hair, you probably can go a week, maybe even longer, because your hair wants to hold on to that moisture. So I would say, if you can help it, try not to wash your hair more than every other day and start adding a day on. Granted, if we exercise and do all that stuff, yes, please wash your hair. But <laughs> if you're not and you're just trying to train your scalp train, I say, but it's just getting your skin used to having its own regular supply of sebum, which is the oil that your scalp secretes. You wanna try to get it to every other day, every two or three days. And then if you can go a week or longer like I do. So it's basically you have to train your hair. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Um, I will say because I only wash my hair once a week, when I do shampoo, I have to shampoo my hair twice because I have product that's been built up. The oils from your scalp create a um, waterproof sort of barrier between your scalp and the shampoo. So you have to really emulsify and then rinse and then repeat in order to get a good lather so that your hair is thoroughly being cleaned. Perfect, okay. Um, if there's any other questions, please feel free to unmute yourself and ask real quick. And while we're doing that, we're gonna pick a winner. And so we're gonna pick a winner at random from the group chat and Sheila Augustine, you are the winner. Yay, Sheila! Yay! So just put your email address, Sheila, in the chat so that Yvonne can get in touch with you and get you this awesome gift that she's giving away. And if there's no other questions, Julie, we'll turn it back over to you. Okay. Of you, but I've been writing a lot. So anyway, thank you, Yvonne. You did a wonderful job. Thank, Thank you, you for Julie. all that joined us today. It was great. And uh, we're looking forward to some other fun Fridays, but thank you for taking your time today to join us. And everyone, have a powerful day and a great weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Bye. Bye-bye.